Welcome to another video. In today's video I'm going to be showing you a hand crank generator that I made using parts from an old Xerox laser copying machine. Now what you're looking at right here, this was a large piece of sheet metal that I cut out of the machine and I rounded off all the edges. None of these are sharp. All the edges are nice and smooth. There was other gears in position here that drove a stepper motor. Now the stepper motor was actually a very high quality stepper motor and that's what you see right here. You can see the E-clip on the end. What I'm going to end up doing is using the stepper motor that you see right here in another circuit. I kept the integrated circuit which drives the stepper motor. Now I did have a couple of good DC motors laying around. This one right here is from a Makita drill, an older one, a 7.2 volt or a 9.6, one of the two. And I had this motor here, which I also found at the dump, and it's a 24 volt motor. And on the motor, there was a ferrite bead that the wires wound through. The purpose of the bead is to suppress electromagnetic interference, so I figured I would just leave it there. It's not going to hurt anything. Now the circuit that I made, once the wires from the motor go through the bead, across the DC output is a 35 volt AC or a 45 volt DC varistor. I had it laying around. I figured it would be extra protection against spikes from the motor. So I added that across the leads. Now after the varistor, I have a bridge rectifier, which I made out of four, five, eight, one, eight shot key diodes. The purpose of using the bridge rectifier in this fashion is to allow me to turn the generator clockwise or counterclockwise and still have positive where it's supposed to be and negative. Ordinarily, if you turn it backwards, this will become positive and then the red one will become negative and if you go forward then you'll have positive here and negative there. I want to have it that regardless of the way that you turn the motor you always have the same polarity in the right spot. I also added a 5 volt regulated output. Now right over here I have a USB connector which puts out a regulated 5 volts using the LM7805IC. I have a 100 microfarad 16 volt on the input side of the LM7805 and I have a 22 microfarad on the output side of the 7805. And these two wires right here come off of the input side of the LM7805. And the reason why I left it that way is because I'd like to have a higher unregulated output voltage. Now in this case, if I turn the crank at a reasonable speed, I'll be putting out around 13.5. So this could become very useful for charging small lead acid batteries or any other thing that you might want to charge. The way I set it up, I drilled a hole into the large gear assembly. This was there and that was there. I added this location. Once I drilled the hole, I put a stainless steel bolt. It's about two and a quarter inches long and I slid a brass sleeve over it. I have a nut here and a nut on the underside and I have Loctite blue to keep them from loosening. So now I have a nice handle that this rotates on and I can spin and it's nice and smooth. The gear ratio is for every one revolution on the large, I get about eight and a quarter turns out of my shaft on the motor. Now the motor that I used had a much smaller shaft than the one that was on the stepper motor. So what I did in this diagram here, you can see it, very simple, let me hold it right there. It had roughly a two and a half millimeter diameter shaft. Took my Dremel with a cutoff wheel and I cut straight down and out. So now I have a nice flat spot on the shaft. So once I center this gear over the shaft and I pour my JB weld, 
the shaft can actually lock into the JB weld or whatever other epoxy material that you may use and it will not slip and actually everything made it nice I have two bolts I drilled one first once I drilled that one I swung the motor into position that it was nice against the gear there was no wobbling and I drilled a hole for the other bolt I applied a little bit of grease around the gears and that's it as you can see it spins nice and smooth I could turn either way fits in my hand nice I could put the fingers underneath over the top and I'm good to go or I could place it down like this and I could put my fingers there and spin it nice and easy like that so what I'm going to do now is give you a quick demonstration of how well this works let me turn on this first make sure you can see that uh, I think you can see that let me take the positive here and the negative what you're looking at now is some voltage coming off of the capacitor on the input side of the LM7805 right now we're going to be putting out between 10 and a half and 13 and a half volts depending on the speed of rotation on the large gear you should see it on the meter right here 14 volts I go faster of course 15 now you see I'm getting the voltage is positive there's no negative on the side now the clockwise is giving me I'm going pretty slow and I'm getting about seven and a half volts now when I go backwards you're still going to see the same positive voltage and that's the beauty of using the diodes in that fashion you'll always have a positive in the right spot and a negative in the right spot now the next thing I want to do I could get rid of this the 5 volt definitely works you can take my word on that you'll see it in a minute let me move my meter out of the way this motor right here is a lot heavier duty than the one here All right. I'm going to turn this crank and this motor will spin fine What I'm going to do now, let me zoom in a little better. I hope that's clear. I can't tell. Just stare right here. And when I crank this, the larger motor will start to spin. Let me start slow. See it turning slow? Now I'm going to go fast. Now she's spinning at a very good clip. I go backwards and it still spins the same direction clockwise. You see how nice and smooth this is. I have a little bit of grease on the gears. I'm not turning too fast, and that motor is spinning well. Now we go faster. You could actually, you could hear that motor. All right, let me zoom back out. Let me slide this just this way a little bit. All right, so you saw that. I could also use the output to charge this capacitor right here. This is a one farad, 11 volt super capacitor. Hook up the positive, hook up the negative, and I'll hold that in my hand. And I'm gonna crank that. I could do this for about 30 seconds. Good enough, take this off. And what I just did is I put a very good charge on here that it will run my dual LED headlamp. This goes on a 9 volt battery normally. I have a circuit for this. It's really, really good. I'm surprised a lot more people haven't viewed that video. This has an LDR on top, so when you have the battery connected, if you're outdoors, the light remains off. As soon as you go into a dark area, both LEDs will turn on brightly. So what I'm going to do now is place this 
just like it was a 9 volt battery. All right. A light that, let me cover my hand with a light. All right. Now, this light will actually run with this capacitor. After a 30 second crank, it'll run about five minutes. And that's, that's pretty good to get five minutes of a bright light like that. I'm going slow. So that charged that up. Let's take this automotive bulb. This draws over a half of an amp at 12 volts. So let me see if I can get a decent crank on this. All right. Lights that right up. Now the next thing I'm going to show you is the charging ability of the 5 volts regulated output. Now in order to charge with this, I had to adjust the data negative and data positive pins, which is pins 2 and 3 inside the USB connector. You just can't use the negative and positive and plug it in because the phone is looking for a specific charger and a specific voltage coming off of these pins. Now in my case, I have pins 2 and 3 set for 1.25 volts. Now how I did that is very simple. From the red wire on the USB, I connected a 47K resistor quarter watt. From that junction, that goes out and I connected both pins 2 and 3 together. A 15K right here from the junction that goes to the negative or the black wire of the USB. So now I'm going to have roughly 1.25 volts being outputted to pins 2 and 3 here and that will now allow my Samsung phone as well as a lot of my other devices including my Samsung digital camera which I'm using to film this video right now. So let me plug this in. I'm going to hold this in my hand. The phone is off. Now this puts out a fair amount of current but I don't think it puts out enough to actually run the phone and charge it at the same time but it does have no problem whatsoever charging that phone. So here we go. And I'm not, I'm not turning it that fast. You can see the dots moving across. My battery is pretty charged in there. But as you see the little white dots moving from left to right showing that the current is flowing into my phone to charge it. And that's it. Alright, well the next thing I'm going to do now is show you that this also charges the digital camera that I'm filming this video with. What I'm now going to do is switch from my Samsung camera and I'm going to be using my Samsung phone to film the rest of this video because I want to plug in my Samsung camera and show you that that also charges just fine. You'll see this come on red as it's charging. So let's do that. All right, this is my Samsung camera plugged into the same USB. When it starts charging, it will remain red. So let me crank it up. There we go. I can feel the resistance on the little DC motor. You can see the red light is remaining on and the and the camera is charging nicely. I can keep going. I can stop. And that's it. So you see it also works well using my digital camera. So this is a very useful little crank generator in the event of an emergency where you need to charge something and there's no power available if you don't have a solar panel or if there's no wind and I could even possibly add another gear out here and come off with a shaft and maybe put a four foot fan blade so when the wind blows it'll turn a gear about half this size right next to this one to rotate all of this and I could have electricity produced using wind. If you enjoyed this video, please rate it a thumbs up, subscribe, and post links to this video on other websites and blogs. 
Also be sure to check out my video playlist as well. Thank you very much for watching.